Fitz's law, Hicks law, Steering law, these are all examples for models that describe very basic tasks. But often in HCI, we are interested in more complex ones. And this is where KLM comes into play. KLM goes one step further in well, this abstraction hierarchy. And what you can do with KLM is you can predict how long it takes users to interact with more complex user interfaces. So what we'll cover now is figure out what KLM actually stands for, learn about the KLM operators, and in the end, we're hopefully able to predict how long certain tasks take using KLM. So let's look at an example. This is the basic form, and we would like to know more about this form and how long people need in order to interact with this form. So just this form is not sufficient. We need one additional thing. We need a task. Uh, let's say the task is convert 12 euros to US dollar. One is on hand is on the mouse and nothing is selected. What do we need to know? Well, we need to know the task sequence at least, right? Uh, so let's look at that. So the first thing is I select this text field. Then I delete the old value, I enter a new one, I point at euro, I point at US dollar, and then finally I point and click on convert. And well, then the user is basically done. And what you could do now is figure out for all these operations, how long do they actually take? And an educated guess is fine, but it would be nicer if we have actual values that we can just plug in. So this is what KLM provides us with. KLM, or the keystroke level model, is part of a whole family of different models, which is called the GOMS family. And GOMS stands then for Goals, Operators, Methods, and Selection Rules. What we can do with KLM, we can predict how much time it takes to execute certain tasks. And this in contrast to most other models from the GOMS family, which are not able to predict actual timings. Uh, on the other hand, and we will cover that, other models from the GOMS family are able to model more abstract tasks than just the ones that KLM can deal with. So what does KLM consist of? Basically, it's a list of operators. And these primitive operators are then grouped in three groups. There's a big group of physical motor operators, including pressing a button, pointing, drawing a line, hitting a key. Then there is the mental operator, which is basically the time a user needs in order to prepare for the next physical operator. So things like, hmm, which currency do I want to choose? What is the amount of money that I actually want to enter or convert? And then there's a system and response operator, which is well there in order to cover how much time does a system need to respond to the user's input. For well, most systems, or for the form that we looked at, we can assume the system response is like very, very short, so don't uh, consider that. But there are other examples where the system might actually take some time to respond, and then this is obviously useful. So this is the list, the full list of KLM operators. And the first one is the K, and that's just a simple keystroke. So users enter a character, for example. But it also covers things like shift or the control key. Right? And each key is considered equal. And now we can think about how long does it take to press one of these keys on my keyboard. And if you think about that, it obviously depends a bit on the user. Uh, if I never saw a keyboard in my life, and then someone asked me, press the A, and then I wouldn't know where the A is, and then I have to do a linear search, search the whole keyboard for an A. And this obviously takes much more time than the time required by an expert who is well-trained on using keyboards. And for an expert, well, expert can type without looking on the keyboard, and so the expert is much faster. So there are different values for different types of users. Uh, it's typically assumed that an expert typist takes 120 milliseconds, an average skilled typist 200 milliseconds. 
someone like me who's well used to use keyboards on a daily basis but has never received formal training, maybe 280 milliseconds, and someone who has never used a keyboard in his or her life, 1.2 seconds. The next operator is the so-called homing operator. Homing means I move the hand between the mouse or the pointing device and the keyboard and back again. And like one change from mouse to keyboard is considered a homing operation and that is assumed to take 400 milliseconds. What's important to note is that whenever we type or point, KLM assumes that we have to move the hand from the mouse to the keyboard or back again. So it's in KLM not possible to type while your hand is on the mouse. The next thing is if we like have the hand on the mouse, then we of course want to click on the buttons and this is decomposed into one even simpler operations. One is pressing the mouse button down and one releasing the mouse button again. So each of these is considered a B and then we have the BB for a full click. So pressing the mouse button down or releasing it again takes 100 milliseconds and doing both then takes 200 milliseconds. The next one is the P operator. And for this one, you might think like, oh, can't we use Fitz law for that? We can, but often we don't have to want to deal with these things. So we just use um, a value which is a good average. So it's considered 0 0.8 to 1.5 seconds with an average of 1.1 seconds. Um, we can also use Fitz law, but we, if we just want to have an idea how long it takes, and we just take the average 1.1 seconds. Uh, the next one is drawing a line. And it's assumed that if a user wants to draw a line, for example, to encircle things, or maybe even in a drawing application, then we can decompose this complex movement into line sequence. And then we say each line sequence takes a certain amount of time. And so we have these two components. We want to draw a line and this consists out of this and that many segments. And then we can figure out how long it takes drawing a line. Then we have the mental operator. So the first one that doesn't fit these physical motor operators anymore. And but this is a bit more difficult to es estimate and also to figure out how often does it actually appear. Do people need time to think about where do I click next? Do they need time to figure out which currency they want? And well, that depends on the training of the user and maybe the state of mind. So it's not super clear when to apply the motor operator. But however, it's assumed that any mental operation takes 1.35 seconds, right? So that's obviously a simplification. And then the last one is the system response time. And similar to the mental operator, it depends, right? But for this one, as we have control over the computer, we then can typically figure that out. We can just measure that or get a good idea because we know the system. Okay, but if you just take the default values, we can now go back to our form. Okay, so we had this, select text field, delete value, and so on. These are not operators from KLM. So we have to well do that again in a more formal way. What does it actually mean? Select the text field. We had the hand on the mouse, and now we want to select the text field, which means we have to point there, and we have to click. And click is two Bs. And then, okay, what did we do next? We deleted the value that was already there. Okay, so it doesn't require the mouse anymore, but now suddenly it requires the keyboard. So I have to move my hand from the mouse to the keyboard. And then I have to delete the value. What does it mean? I just press the delete button. As a result, I have the homing operator going from one device to the other, and then I press one key. And then I want to enter a value. I remember its value was 12. The hands are now on the keyboard. So we just enter the value. But in this case, so the value, entering the value means two times K, two keys. 
But in this case, it's assumed, or we assume that the user might need time to figure out what was the actual value that I wanted to convert. Doesn't take the user too long, but yeah, that might be the case. Then we want to select zero. What does it mean? We have to go back to the mouse again. Then we have to figure out what was the currency where I come from. Then we have to point there, point to euro, and then we have to click, which means two times B. Same thing again. Um, the only difference is that for dollar, we need, don't need the homing anymore because the hand is already on the mouse. So it's just the mental operator pointing and then two times the B. And finally, we assume we want to press convert and while this is the only button left that hasn't been clicked and there is no joist, so we just assume there is no mental operation. It's just pointing and clicking. Okay, and it, now we have these CalM operators. What we can do now is we can get an exact number out of it. So we have these operators and we know how long each operator takes and we just take the average. So we know that there are four pointing operations and pointing takes 1.1 seconds. So we know it's 4.4. And so on, right? So we have eight Bs, two homing operations, two, three mental operations, three keystrokes. And yeah, for each of them, we can now figure that out using just these times and multiplication. So 4.4 seconds, uh, 0.8 seconds, and so on. And in the end, we can just add them up and come up with 10.89 seconds. Now, if we would run an actual study, it's unlikely that our participants, I mean, would reach 10.89 seconds precisely, right? That's very unlikely. Um, and even if that would be the average, there would be like participants that are faster and slower. But what's nice about KLM is that it gives us an estimate. And what's especially nice is that it enables us to compare different interfaces. So maybe my participants or my users are especially well trained. Uh, so they are much faster than the average person. So their values would be much lower. Maybe they don't need 1.1 second to select something, so, but they just need 600 milliseconds. Maybe hitting a key only takes them 100 milliseconds. But if I want to compare different interfaces, that doesn't really matter because my well trained users would be well trained for both systems. So if I have two systems and I come up with a value in seconds out of KLM, then maybe the numbers are not precise, but in relation to each other, they can be very helpful because well, the faster system, according to KLM, is most likely also the faster system in the real world. So let's look at the comparison. What you see here are four versions of the same action that a user wants to perform. So ver version A or one is you have these radio buttons and then you select the radio button, then you press go. The task for all of these interfaces that we will look at now is select photo, however that works with each interface. Version two, this is much simpler. There are four links and the only thing you have to do is you have to click on photo. Version three, there's a combo box so you press on this small arrow, uh, the list opens, and then you click on photo, and then you click on go. And for version four, you have to type photo, and then you have to press go. So now we might wonder, how long does it take? The hands on the mouse, nothing is selected, and now we want to go to photo. Which is the fastest interface? Well, it's actually version two, and this is not too surprising, right? I mean, we look at these interfaces and uh, this only requires a click. The hand is already on the mouse, can't take too long. Um, but we can use KLM to look into that in more detail. And the other question is, which is the slowest? And this might, this might be more surprising. So the slowest actually version three, and you might think by, by this version four, I have to type all these characters. Why is version three? Um, even slower. And well, KLM can provide us with an answer to that. 
To wrap up, the keystroke level model, or short KLM, predicts task completion times for simple dialogues. It assumes an average trained user, so if you have outliers, these are not covered by KLM. And it's especially useful to compare different alternatives. So the absolute seconds that came out of KLM might not be super precise, but in relation to each other, if you compare to interfaces, they can be very useful. Using KLM by hand, as we did in the examples, that can become quite lengthy and complex. So then it's recommended to use tools that help you with that. Um, and KLM is useful for a lot of things, but it's not useful for interfaces that require complex reasoning. So if the user has to think about what has been done, and this thinking about takes a lot of time, or maybe even more time than controlling the interface, then KLM cannot cover that, and then this is obviously not very useful.